So classification stores are part of the PIM system in PIM Core. They allow you to enrich data of your products. A use case for them would be if you have a lot of, let's say, electronic equipment that you're selling on your site or your client is selling. Each of the equipment has their own specifications. Like for example, a motherboard has a chipset, a socket, format, memory type, uh, supported ports, and etc. And if all of your products have different specifications, this is where classification stores would come in. So you can uh, go here to settings, uh, data objects, and classification store. The first step that you need to do is actually create a store. So let's call it a store, just call it store, doesn't matter. Here we have to define all of the following tabs. So we first need to create a group of collections, then we need to create a group, and then we need to add key definitions. First, since I did talk about, let's say, the motherboard. So in this case, this would fall under IT. Let's create a group. This group we can call, let's say, mother motherboard. And here we would define the actual attributes. So here, Let's say one of the attributes of a motherboard would be a chipset. Another one would be a socket. Another one would be, let's say, format. And let's add another one and call it memory type. There we go. Now we can see that we can also define a, well, a description, change the title if need be. But here on the right side, we actually have the type of the field that it's going to be. Um, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to leave all of these as inputs, but these are basically very similar to the types that you have when you're adding a input for, let's say, uh, a certain class. Actually, you know what? We can change, let's say, the, the chipset. We can click on this and we can create a, let's say, a select option. There we go. Now we can see that we can set up a few things like uh, is it mandatory or not? Is it edib editable or not? Um, we can add a few options here. We can, let's say, call it AMD and let's add Intel. So we're just going to have these two chipsets. Click on apply. What we need to do here is add all of the keys that we created. So the chipset, format, memory type, and socket. We're going to pick all of them and add them to our group. So there we go. We can also sort them by a certain order. So for example, if I wanted uh, my chipset to be at the first place, we're going to put the sorter at zero. On the second one, as the second one, we want to put the socket on the third one as the format. We want to put it on the third place and this on the actual fourth place. Okay. And here in the collection groups, we can add our motherboard. So there we go. That's all set up. We can now close it. And if we go to our objects, classes, there we go. Click on test. Let's add a new panel. Call it classification source. Copy this, put it as the title. Don't forget to put the title. If you don't put the title, the tab is going to be blank. And here, if we go under uh, data component and we go uh, here to structured, click on classification store, add the name of the field. Uh, 
gonna call it test classification. Here you can define uh, which store uh, are allowed to be uh, put within the field or stored within the field. In this case, we only have one. You can also add the maximum number of groups which are allowed within the store. Uh, we're just gonna leave that uh, at zero. Click on save and there we go. Now, if we go on one of our objects, we're going to have a new tab where we can add new classification stores. So in this case, we only have one. We can go here to, let's say, motherboard. You can also um, go here to the collection and click the collection. But since um, we only have the group, only one group within this collection, we can just click here. It basically adds the same thing. And now you can see that we have our chipset, socket, format, and memory type. And let's say for the chipset, we're going to put in AMD. For the socket, I don't know, AM4. For format, um, uh, MATX. And the memory type is DDR4. If we click on save, now you can see this is saved on the actual object and then you can use this for let's say displaying it on the front end uh, displaying the specifications of your products you can add as many classification stores as you want and or need of course another cool thing that you actually have is maybe if you didn't put in these two fields uh let's save it i forgot to to show this if you go to I'm sorry, if you go to classes, click on the field collection, you can hide the empty data. So for example, if I save this now and refresh it, you can see that only these two fields are shown because they're only filled in, but you can click on this and now you'll be able to see all of them. This may be useful if you have a lot of inputs uh, for the specification, but not necessarily that you're going to have all of them filled in. This may help you in a way where you can read the data easier. Now, let me just show you how you can use this data and set it to the, uh, send it to the front end. Well, actually, we're not going to send it here directly. We're just going to dump the data. I'm just going to show you how you can do that. If you go to the classification store uh, documentation from PEMCOR, you can go down here and see retrieve group and key data. And here you can see that they're actually using an object, uh, fetching the field name. So in our case, uh, for this uh, particular class, the field name would be test classification. So we can actually copy all of this, uh, paste it with inner code. And as you can see, we are already here um, fetching a particular object of the ID of 1134. So if we, call the get test classification method within our object. We can basically leave this, well, almost as is um, here. Uh, we're not gonna war dump this. We're just going to uh, dump it. And if we go to our route uh, now, that is calling that that method. If we refresh it, we can see that we have our group name. This is defined here within the store uh, group. And we have each of our fields. You probably won't need all of the data that is um, shown here. Enough would be if we would just show basically the title, the value. We don't need this. So that's basically, basically that. If we now refresh it, we can see that we have, again, the group name, the name of the field, and the value. Hope the video helped you. And if you wanna learn more about PIMCore, you can check out my Udemy course called Learning PIMCore from Zero to Hero, where I will show you all of the steps from creating a project, buying and setting up a server, as well as deploying your project. Hope to see you there.